<clears throat> okay, now we are in Goosebumps Horror Land, My Friends Call Me Monster by R.L. Stein, and it's book seven, and we are doing the Enter Horror Land part now. So, of course, we have right here what the ticket looks like to get in. We've seen that before. <coughs> the story so far. Several kids received mysterious invitations to be very special guests at Horrorland theme park. They looked forward to a week of scary fun, but the scares quickly became too real when Slappy the Evil Dummy, Dr. Maniac, and other menacing villains started to appear. Two very special guests, Brittany Cos Crosby and Molly Malloy, disappeared in a cafe with a mirrored wall. The others have been trying desperately to find them. The park guides, called Horrors, have been no help at all. Except for one horror, named Byron. He warned the kids they were all in danger. He said he'd help them escape from Horrorland. He gave them tokens, which turned out to be tracking devices. Was he trying to protect them? Most of the kids didn't like the idea of being spied on. They gave away their tokens. Byron told them to meet him at the Bat Barn, and he'd explain what was going on. But he didn't show up, and the kids were attacked by bats. The Bat Barn was supposed to be a fun attraction, but these bats are real. Michael Monroe arri arrived the day before, and now he finds himself in a terrifying battle in the Bat bat barn with the other very special guests he continues the story chapter one red-eyed bats shrieked as they darted and swooped over us i ducked as the bat whistled past my head then roared up to the rafters of the barn kids screamed and covered their faces i swung both arms hard and swatted a bat off a girl's shoulder the bats are real someone screamed it's supposed to be a joke a boy cried a fat creature thudded into my chest, wings flapping furiously. Sharp claws dug into my t-shirt. I gripped the bat with both hands and flung it off me. My new friend, Abby Martin, pressed her hands over her face. She screamed as a bat danced on her head, pulling at her hair. With a loud cry, I slapped it away. My second day as a very special guest at Horrorland. It wasn't exactly what I had imagined. Where was the horror Byron, the tall one with the yellow horns? He told us to meet him here. He didn't have time to think about him. We didn't have time to think about him. The screeching, glowing-eyed bats were out for blood. The barn was big and dark. The doors had closed behind us. The only light came from a narrow window high in the roof of the barn. In the darkness, it seemed like a thousand wings were beating around us, a thousand shrill creatures zooming low, tearing and biting at us. Abby screamed again. I lurched toward her and stumbled over a pile of straw. Suddenly, I had an idea. Could I stop the bat attack? The kids back home call me Monster. Believe me, I know a lot about monsters, because I was one. My parents and I would still would still be monsters, but I led them to Mr. Wong's house. Talk about luck. There was enough of the disgusting egg yolk enough to turn us back to humans. It's a long story, but ever since, I always carry my lucky dog whistle with me. I pulled it out of my jeans pocket and raised it to my mouth. Would it be lucky now? Yes, seconds later, the shrill bat cries stopped. A strange hush fell over the barn. The bats appeared to freeze in midair. They stopped their furious flapping. They glided up to the rafters. They didn't come back down. The other kids were blinking, shaking, and shivering, gazing around in confusion. Carly Beth and Sabrina dropped to their knees in the straw. Robbie spun around in a circle, hands raised. The bats were gone, but he was still fighting them off. Hey, Michael. Mad strode up to me. How did you do that? How did you stop the bats? I raised my dog whistle. Had this in my jeans, I said. Thought I'd give it a try. I guess the sound hurt them or confused them or something. Good work, Michael, Abby said. Her hands trembled as she tugged at her long black hair, trying to smooth it down. She slapped me a high five. That was scary. Billy Deep and his sister Sheena stared at the rafters. They're still up there, Sheena murmured. Think they'll attack again? We're out of here, Matt said. He pushed past me and led the way to the barn doors. He shoved one open. Late afternoon sunlight poured in. We followed him to a small grassy field beside the barn. Sabrina gazed around. Where's Byron, she asked. He was supposed to meet us here. Must have gotten hung up, Robbie said. What if it was an ambush, I said. I tapped the dog whistle against my palm. My skin was still tingled. My skin still tingled from the touch of the bat claws. 
What if this dude Byron planned the whole thing? I asked. You mean he told us to come here knowing the bats would attack? Abby asked. No way, Matt replied, shaking his head. Byron is our only friend here. Matt's right, Billy said. He's the only horror who told us the truth. Byron warned us we were all invited here for a reason. He told us we were all in danger. But Byron is the one who gave us those tokens, right? I said, and they turned out to be tracking devices. He wanted to spy on us. I pointed to the bat barn, and now he sent us here to be creamed by screaming bats. Don't accuse Byron, Matt said, narrowing his eyes at me. I started to lose it. Sorry, if Byron is your hero, but I'll accuse whoever I want, I snapped. Matt clenched his hands into fists. He was a big dude, almost as big as me. You just got here, Michael, he said, sneering. You don't know enough to start mouthing off. I should have just shut up, but that would be a first. I know enough to fight back when I'm in trouble, I said. I don't just stand around like you, shaking like a wimp, waiting for someone to come help me. Stop it, you two, Sabrina cried. We don't have time. Too late. Matt rushed up to me. I timed it just right and gave him a hard bump with my chest. His eyes went wide with surprise. He stumbled back and landed on his butt in a wide patch of mud. With a furious cry, he leaped to his feet, grabbed me by, by the shoulders, pulled me down into the mud, and we started wrestling. Stop it! Stop it! Sabrina grabbed my shoulders and tried to pull me off Matt, but she wasn't strong enough. I grabbed Matt's head and pushed his face into the mud. He came up sputtering. What are you fighting for? Abby cried. We're in danger. We have to stay on the same side. Matt spit a mouthful of mud in my face. <clears throat> I pushed his shoulders down and pinned him to the ground. Stop! Stop the fight! I heard two voices I didn't recognize. I turned my head. I raised my head, turned, and saw two black and orange uniformed monster police running toward us, swinging with wooden clubs. Dudes, run! Billy screamed. Chapter 2 I jumped to my feet and helped pull Matt from the mud. Why were we fighting? I couldn't remember. As they stampeded toward us, the monster police waved their sticks and screamed at us to stop. I knew they wouldn't hurt us. I mean, we were guests at the park, right? But I took off anyway. We all did. We ran in different directions. I was close behind Abby for a while, but then I lost her in the crowd, and then I lost myself in the crowd. Where was I? I was running full speed now along a wire fence. On the other side, I saw kids on a beach. The kids were screaming and laughing, sinking into the sand. Finally, I saw a sign. Quicksand Beach, drop in any time. It looked like fun. I spun around. I'd lost the two monster policemen. I took a few minutes to catch my breath. Then I made my way back to Stagger Inn. A short while later, everyone gathered in my room on the 13th floor. <coughs> Matt and I stared at each other with our hands in our pocket, jeans pockets. Then we both apologized at once. We even shook hands. We're cool? I asked. We're cool, Matt said. Look, we're all scared and stressed out, Carly Beth said, but we have to stick together. She sighed and dropped down onto the edge of my bed next to her friend Sabrina. Sabrina and I didn't believe any of this, she said, you know, about the missing girls in the other park. But we do now, Sabrina said. Look, Abby and I just got here yesterday, I said. We don't know why everyone is so nervous. Tell us what's up. They all started talking at once. Finally, Matt said he'd try to explain everything. As soon as I arrive, he started, this horror named Byron runs up to me. He says I'm in danger and gives me this. Matt pulled a gray plastic card from his wallet. It's a room key card, he said, but it's not from Horrorland, and it seems to have special powers. It helped me win at the carnival games. And it opens doors that regular key cards don't open. Our first day, my sister Sheena and I met these two girls, Billy Deep interrupted, Molly Malloy and Brittany Crosby. Then they disappeared. Gone. Poof. We've been searching for them ever since. The horrors won't help us, Sheena said. They say the girls were never here. We saw them in a cafe with a big mirrored wall, Matt said. This key car opened the door to the cafe, but when we went inside, the girls were gone. The mirror was soft like liquid, Sheena explained. I stuck my arm into it, and I disappeared too. It's all very hazy but I think I ended up in a different park. Byron keeps leaving us hints about another park, Matt said. He held up the two pieces of an old park guide. One showed a carousel with the flame shooting out of it. It was called the Wheel of Fire. The other showed a hall of mirrors called Mirror Mansion. Strange characters keep following us here, Robbie said, trying to frighten us. We've all had scary problems back home, and they followed us to the park. 
When we looked into a piece of mirror, we saw Brittany and Molly on that burning carousel, Billy said. I think we're in real danger, Carly Beth said. We need to make a plan. We need to get out of this park. Whoa, wait a sec, I said. Tell me more about the mirrors. All this stuff about mirrors is really interesting. I searched my whole room, Abby said. I couldn't find a mirror anywhere. Whoever heard of a hotel room without mirrors? Again, everyone started talking at once. None of us had mirrors in our rooms. This is totally disturbing, I said. It means we have to find a mirror. Mirrors must be a very important clue. We have to find Byron first, Matt said. He's the only one who can tell us what's going on. I didn't want to fight with Matt again. I could see he wanted to be leader of the group, and that was okay with me. But once I get something in my head, I can't get it out. And right then, mirrors were definitely in my head. So we split up. They all went out to search for Byron, and I went to hunt for a mirror. We planned to meet in Matt's room in two hours. I searched every inch of my room first. The other kids were right. No mirror. Nothing even shiny enough to be used as a mirror. I was dying to know why. What if I just ask someone for a mirror, I thought. It seemed like a good plan. I took the dark, creaky elevator down to the hotel lobby. The elevator had thick cobwebs hanging from its roof. Eerie organ music played all the way down. But I wasn't in the mood for that kind of scary fun. I was on a mission. I stepped up to the front desk. A green-skinned horror with curly green hair and one brown eye and one blue eye stood behind the counter. He wore a bright, blue, a bright purple tuxedo and lacy white shirt. A very colorful dude. His name tag read Boomer. He looked up from his laptop. Help you? Yes, I said. Do you have a mirror I could borrow? A mirror? He replied, squinting at me with his brown eye. Yes, do you have a mirror? I repeated. He smiled. Sure thing, he said. No problem. I blinked. That was easy. Chapter 3 Then Boomer's smile grew wider. He leaned closer over the counter. With your face, Sonny, are you sure you want a mirror? He burst out laughing. Ha ha. I didn't crack a smile. Yes, I said. I couldn't find a mirror in my room. Of course not, he said. I don't get it. I said, why aren't there any mirrors here? Boomer lowered his voice to a whisper. Because a lot of our guests are vampires, he said. It makes them sad to pass a mirror and not see their reflection. We're just trying to be considerate, see? I felt myself start to get steamed. Boomer, I said, I'm not going to get a straight answer from you, am I? He shook his head. No, you're not, he replied. <coughs> well, can you tell me where I might find a mirror? I asked. He thought for a moment. Have you tried Mirror Lake? Excuse me? I said, Mirror Lake? Is that in this park? He shrugged. I don't know. I just made it up. He laughed again. Ha ha. This dude was a riot. Thanks a bunch, I said. I turned and walked out of the hotel. I knew I'd find a mirror somewhere in Horrorland. I tried the shops first. Clothing stores always have mirrors. I walked into a shop called Forget It. They had t-shirts and caps made of genuine werewolf fur. I tried on a cap. It was way itchy. I asked the sales clerk behind the counter for a mirror so I could see how the cap looked. Sorry, kid. He said, no mirrors here. We're very superstitious. What if we broke one? Seven years bad luck. That made me think of Mrs. Hardesty, or whatever her real name was. She was superstitious, too. I tried the mask store across the, route, across the road. No mirrors. I tried three more shops. No mirrors anywhere. This was definitely a mystery that needed to be solved. I began stopping people who passed by. Do you have a mirror I could borrow? It's really important. Most of them thought I was crazy, or they thought it was some kind of horror land joke. They just kept walking. I was ready to give up. The sun was sinking behind the trees of Wolf, Wolfsbane Forest. I felt tired and hungry, and angry that I couldn't find such a simple thing as a mirror. <coughs> I guess my nickname, Monster, is a good one. When things don't go my way, I can feel my anger start to boil up. I turned back toward the hotel. My brain was spinning with the story of the two girls who disappeared in the cafe with the soft liquid mirror. Then a small black and white sign caught my eye. It was on the wall of a low white building, set back from the street. The building had a narrow white door and no windows. The sign read, Off Limits, Staff Only, Do Not Enter. I read the sign three times, then I stepped up to the narrow door. Was the door locked? Normally, I would have obeyed the sign, but right now I was feeling angry and frustrated. I don't like mysteries. I want to solve this one quickly. I turned the knob. The door opened slowly. Did someone forget to lock it? I stepped inside and closed it behind me. I was in a tiny square hallway. 
In front of me, a concrete storeway, stairway leading steeply down. A sign above the stairway read, Do not enter. I peered down the stairs. Too dark to see anything down there. Silence. No sounds floating up. Maybe they hide all the mirrors here, I told myself. Maybe I'll find stacks and stacks of mirrors. I knew that was dumb, but I had to find out what was down there. I took a deep breath and started down the stairs. My shoes thudded on the concrete. The stairs seemed to go down forever. I stopped halfway and squinted into the dim light. I still couldn't see anything. Just a high concrete wall. No people, no horrors, no sounds. I climbed the rest of the way down. Gazing all around, I found myself in an enormous cavern. It seemed to stretch for miles. It was silent there. I could hear my footsteps echo off the concrete walls. I came to a dark tunnel entrance in the wall. Glancing around, I saw dozens of tunnels heading off in all directions. Fat pipes and electrical cables stretched down the tunnels. From deep in the tunnel, I could hear the hum of machinery. I jumped when I heard a shrill beep, beep, beep. Spinning around, I saw a row of robots shuffling out of one tunnel. Dozens of them. They looked like shiny metal wheel wheelbarrows with heads and arms. A wheel in front and two short legs in back. Their heads were round and covered in control buttons and dials. The heads were spinning and beeping as the wheelbarrow bodies rolled across the floor. Each wheelbarrow carried a large wooden crate. I stood frozen, watching them. Finally, they disappeared into another, another tunnel. Alone again, I moved to the next tunnel. I could see two rows of computer screens and keyboards all down the tunnel. The controls are here underground, I realized. Everything that runs the park, the tunnel, the tunnels must stretch from one end of Horror Lane to the other. It's all electronic, computerized. No people, I realized. Wrong. I gasped as a powerful hand grabbed me tightly by the shoulder and spun me around. My mouth dropped open, but no sound came up, came out. I stared up at the giant horror. He must have been at least eight feet tall. He had long black horns standing straight up from the thick brown fur on his head. He wore a black and orange monster police uniform tight over his massive chest. He gripped my shoulders and didn't let go and start, stared down at me with cold black eyes. Kid, he boomed, you've made a bad mistake. <coughs> Chapter 4 I don't scare easy. After all, I faced real monsters back home, and I defeated them all. But this dude was giant. I, I know I made a mistake, I stammered. Think fast, Michael. I thought this was the doom slide, I said. Some kids pointed me here. They said this was the doom slide ride. He didn't let go of my shoulders. He leaned over me. His breath smelled of onions. Kid, can you read? He asked. I nodded. Yeah. Oh, you mean those signs? Right, the do not enter signs, he said. You read them? I thought they were a joke, I said. You know, part of the doom slide. Like to scare kids, like everything else here. His deep black eyes burned into mine. He was trying to decide if he should believe me or not. You could get lost down here, he said in a low whisper. You could get lost in these tunnels forever. A chill tightened the back of my neck. Was he threatening me? He let go of my shoulders. He stepped back. His shadow on the floor stretched for miles. The signs were real, he said. Go back outside, kid. Walk straight to Zombie Plaza, then follow the signs to the doom slide. Okay, thanks, I said. I turned and hurried to the stairs. Sorry if I scared you, he called after me. Was he kidding? Was he kidding? I didn't wait to find out. We met in Matt's room a short while later. The other kids had no luck either. No sign of the horror named Byron. <coughs> we were all hot and tired and jittery. We weren't having any fun, and we weren't getting anywhere. What was going on in this creepy park? We, did, we still didn't have a clue, but we couldn't stop discussing it. I had that golden token, Robbie said. It said Panic Park, remember? In the vampire restaurant, I stared into the token, Abby said, and I started to feel strange, like it was pulling me, pulling me into it. Abby, could you see your reflection on it? I asked. Was it like a mirror? Abby nodded yes. What happened to it? I asked. A waitress took it, Robbie said. She thought it was her tit. Okay, but this is cool, I said, suddenly excited. A coin can act like a mirror, right? It has to be real shiny, Robbie said. Come on, I said. Who has a shiny coin? Get them out. We all searched our pockets. I pulled out five or six coins from my jeans. They were all rubbed dull. No shiny ones. Angrily, I tossed them onto the floor. Anyone? I cried. No, we only had old scuffed coins. 
Lots of groans of disappointment. Don't give up, Matt said. We can't give up. We're really in danger here, and Byron is gone. There's no one here to help us. I'll be right back, I said. I hurried to my room and grabbed my laptop. I carried it back to Matt's room. Let's search the internet for the words Panic Park, I said. Let's find out everything we can about it. I started to boot up the computer. You can't, Matt said. There's no internet. Our cell phones don't work either, Billy said. There's no way to get online, Sheena said. I guess they don't use computers here. Are you joking? I cried. The whole place is run by computers. I've seen them. I tapped away, but I couldn't get online. No wireless connection. No connection of any kind. But it didn't matter. I suddenly knew what we had to do. I had a plan. A dangerous plan. Follow me, I said. Chapter 5 I led them to the white building with a do not enter sign. It was a warm, sunny day. The park was jammed with people. We passed long lines of kids waiting to get into the werewolf petting zoo and the haunted theater. People were even crowded, crowding around the cart that sold larvae-flavored ice cream. We passed several horrors, but they didn't pay any attention to us. I stopped at the front door of the building. It's all underground, I explained. Lots of tunnels going everywhere. We can hide down there. Then I can finally get online. No problem. Carly, Beth, and Sabrina glanced around nervously. Are you sure about this? Sabrina asked. Those warning signs look serious. No big deal, I said. We're special guests. If we get caught, they'll just send us back to our rooms, right? A few kids muttered, right. The others weren't so sure. I grabbed the knob and tried to pull the door open. Locked. I tugged harder. No way. This time someone had remembered to lock it. That was a long walk for nothing, Billy grumbled. Matt shoved me out of the way. Let's try this, he said. He raised his strange key card to the door and it swung open. We touched knuckles. Hey, I'm impressed, I said. It's all in the wrist, Matt said. He tucked the card back into his wallet. That was the last joke anyone made. Everyone turned very serious as we made our way down the steep steps and into the huge concrete cavern. The air grew warmer, heavy, and damp. In the far distance, I could hear the roar of machinery and the beep beep of the wheelbarrow robots carrying their packages. The sounds echoed in the vast cavern. I stopped at the bottom of the stairs and glanced around. No guards, no sign of that eight-foot-tall dude. Follow me, I whispered. We kept close to the wall and edged our way to the first tunnel. I squinted into the dim light. The tunnel was jammed with old signs and stage props and furniture. Is that guillotine real? Billy asked, pointing. Hope not, I said, but we can, but we can hide behind it. I led them into the tunnel. We hunched down behind the guillotine. I kept peering around, tense, expecting a guard to come jumping out at us. I sat on the floor with my back against the tunnel wall. I propped my laptop on my lap and started typing. Yes, I cried. I knew it. There's a wireless connection down here. Carly Beth leaned over my shoulder. Type in Horrorland, she said. We've got to find out what's going on here. A few seconds later, I found a long article about Horrorland. I started reading it to the others. Horrorland Theme Park was built in the mid-1970s. It was the brainchild of a man named Kit Katzman. Katzman was a huge horror fan his entire life. He populated the park with strange-looking workers named Horrors. At first, Katzman thought they were wearing costumes and masks. Later, he wasn't so sure. Matt grabbed my shoulder. This stuff isn't helping us, he said. Look up Panic Park. See what it says. I did a search for Panic Park. I clicked on several links, but for some reason, they had been deleted or shut down. Finally, I found an article titled Vanished Amusement Parks. I started to read it to everyone. Panic Park was built in the 1950s by an odd private man named Karloff Minnis. It was a park designed for people who liked the worlds of horror, fantasy, and the bizarre. Matt shook his head. Scroll down, he said. We don't care about the 1950s. What about today? Wait, wait, I cried. This is good. Listen to this. It's about that carousel ride. The one that's on fire. I read from my laptop screen. The Wheel of Fire was one of the most popular rides at Panic Park. People loved twirling around while their horses flamed. So that page Byron left us, Sheena, Sheena said. It was definitely from Panic Park. Byron was leaving us clues about Panic Park, Matt said. He must want us to find out more about it. We we saw Brittany and Molly on that ride, Billy said. Robbie stared at the screen. And that golden token I had, it came from Panic Park, he said. 
Let's see what else we can find about Panic Park, I said. I leaned close to the screen and clicked on a few more links. Wait, check this out, I said. It's a blog by a boy and a girl, Luke and Lizzie somebody. They say they spent some time in Horrorland, but whoa, I don't believe this. They're warning us in their blog. They... My voice was drowned out by a high, shrill siren, so loud I pressed my hands over my ears. And then we heard a voice booming through the sound system. Intruders! Intruders! Lockdown! Intruders! Chapter 6 We jumped to our feet. A chill shot down, a chill shot down my back. I could hear shouts, heavy, running footsteps in all directions. How did they find us? Matt whispered. I know, Carly Beth. Sabrina and I made a terrible mistake. We never should have kept the tracking tokens Byron gave us. The two girls tossed their tokens far into the tunnel. They're hiding in tunnel B4, a deep voice boomed. The alarm siren rose and fell. The thundering footsteps grew louder. Let's go, I cried. We ran deeper into the tunnel. Was there a way to escape? We didn't know. We ran from the footsteps and the loud, angry voices. The tunnel twisted and turned. The light grew dimmer. We ducked beneath cables and wires and tangles of cords. Tunnel 4B, the loudspeaker echoed behind us. Intruders, Tunnel 4B. Breathing hard, we stopped at a narrow door. It had the word lab painted on the front. Matt raised his keycard to the door and it swung open. Maybe we can hide in here, he said. He and I led the way down. The room was long and narrow, lit by a row of dim fluorescent lights on the ceiling. I waited for my eyes to adjust. Then I saw the long row of tab lab tables. Behind them, tall cabinets lined the wall. Are those cages? Carly Beth pointed to the big boxes in the center of the room. We took a few steps toward them, then stopped. Oh, wow. I don't believe this. Are they real? We all gasped in shock and stared at the ugly creatures inside the barred cages. They were dark and furry, like gorillas, except their faces. Their faces were almost human. They had bald heads with long pointed ears. And they all had bright blue eyes, human eyes but their fat bodies were covered with black fur and they had big paws with curled claws like bears. They gnashed their teeth. Drool spilled from their mouths. They stuck their long furry arms out through the bars and swiped at us. Gorilla creatures, Sheena cried. Are they real? Are they robots or something? They sure look real. Maybe they're some kind of lab experiments, I said. The ugly creatures grunted and gnashed their teeth. They pushed against the bars of their cages, trying to get at us. We can't stay here, I said. We have to... The door burst open. Ten or twelve monster police came running in. Shouting, they waved wooden clubs above their heads. Freeze, one of them boomed. If you move, you'll be gorilla food. Chapter 7 I glanced around. No other door. No way to escape. The monster police formed a tight line. No way he could make a mad... No way we could make a mad dash for the door. They backed us up against the cages. The gorilla creatures swiped the air, trying frantically to grab us. They roared and slammed their cages. My mind spun. I had an idea. I turned to Matt. Quick, hand me that key card. He started to reach into his jeans pocket. What are you going to do with it, Michael? He whispered. Try to open some cages, I said. Let a few monsters out. You know, distract the MPs. While they're chasing the gorillas, maybe we can get away. Matt blew a long breath through his lips. He both, we both knew it was a crazy idea, but sometimes crazy ideas are the best ideas. He pulled the key card from his pocket. I grabbed for it. No, I yelled as it fell out of my hand. I watched in horror as the card hit the floor and slid under one of the cages. We're doomed, I thought, but Matt dove to the cage and dropped to his knees. He bent down low and slid one hand under the bottom of the cage. And then we all cried out as one of the gorilla creatures reached out of the cage. It grabbed Matt with both paws and lifted him off the floor. Chapter 8 Matt let out a scream. The gorilla creature pulled him up, then crushed him against the cage bars. It was trying to pull him into its cage. Matt thrashed his arms and legs, but the beast had a powerful grip. Matt couldn't break free. He screamed, against, he screamed again as the gorilla slammed him against the bars. I dove to the ground, reached under the cage, slid my fingers around the key card, then I raised it and waved it in front of the lock. Would it work? Yes, the cage door swung open. It took the creature a few seconds to realize the door was open. Then it dropped Matt to the floor and came lumbering out of the cage on two legs. Stop right there, an MP boomed. What are you doing? Are you crazy? 
Matt looked dazed, but he scrambled back to the other kids while I do dove for the next cage. I held up the key card. The cage door swung open, and, and another gorilla beast eagerly staggered out. The two creatures stared at each other. They both growled. I let out a third gorilla. It stumbled out of its cage, drooling and rolling its blue human eyes. The MPs were screaming at us, waving their clubs. The three creatures stood behind the cages, eyeing each other. Stood between the cages, eyeing each other. And then, with a deafening roar, they leaped at each other. As I watched in amazement, they began to wrestle. They pounded each other with their big paws, scratching at each other's faces. Rolled on the floor, snarling and groaning. The MPs rushed to break the fight. They left the door unguarded. In seconds, we all tore through it, back into the tunnel. We turned and ran. No MPs out here. We could hear the monstrous fight grow louder in the lab behind us. We ran deeper into the tunnel. We didn't talk. We didn't stop running. Above us, we saw signs. Doom slide, Annihilator, Quicksand Beach. We were running underneath those attractions. At each sign, a ladder led up to the top of the tunnel. I stopped at a sign that read, Goodbye Land. My legs ached from running. I had a sharp pain in my side. If I remember the map, Goodbye Land is at the back of the park, I choked out. Maybe there's an exit up there. Maybe we can escape Horror Land. I grabbed the sides of the ladder and climbed to the top. A door in the ceiling opened easily. I could see the sky above me. I scrambled out onto grass and held the door open for the others. We're out, Carly Beth cried, pumping her fists in the air. We got away from those MPs, Robbie said. He slapped me on the back. That was awesome, Michael. Letting those beasts out of their cages, that was genius. I raised my face to the sun. The warmth felt really good. My heart was still pounding from our narrow escape. Those gorilla creatures were real, I said. They weren't pretend. How did they get down there? Sheena asked, shaking her head. Why do they keep them underground? What is going on here? Let's just get out of the park, I said. We can try to figure it out later. Do you really think there's an exit in Goodbye Land? Billy asked. Only one way to find out, I said. Goodbye Land stood between a tall hedge. The hedge rose up way over our heads. No way to climb it. I trotted along in its shadow, looking for an opening. Finally, I saw a tiny space. I scrunched up my body, turned sideways, and pushed myself through the edge. Brushing prickly needles off me, I gazed around. I was in a wide, grassy park. A patch of tall trees threw a long shadow over the grass. No people anywhere in sight. No horrors or MPs. A wide, empty park. I turned back to the hedge. Where were the others? Hey, I opened my mouth to call them. But a hand wrapped around my mouth from behind. Then another hand wrapped around my waist and dragged me into the trees. Chapter 9 The hands let go. I spun around and stared at two gigantic horrors. I let out an angry roar. The monster in me took over. I balled my hands into tight fists. I got ready to attack them both. What's the big idea? I screamed. What do you think you're doing? My friends and I are very special guests here. Have you all gone crazy? They both meant motioned for me to calm down. I read the name tags on the front of their purple uniforms. One was named Benson. The other was Clem. Easy kid, Benson said. No one's going to hurt you. Were you trying to leave? You were, weren't you, Clem said. We can't let you leave the park. You and your friends have to stay here. Why, I yelled. This is a free country. I can go anywhere I want. You and your friends think you figured everything out, Benson said. But you don't know what you're doing. I know what I'm doing, I shot back. I'm going to get my friends out of danger. Look, kid, Benson said. We've had a few small problems here. I'll admit, a few things went wrong. But we need you to stay here, his partner said. Take it easy. Enjoy the park, Michael. And stop being such a troublemaker. No way, I cried. If you think I'm a troublemaker, too bad. Someone is out to get us here. Someone is trying to hurt us. And I'm going to get out of this park and take my friends with me. Then we're going to tell the whole world what goes on here. They narrowed their eyes to slits. Their expressions turned angry. They took a few steps toward me. I raised my fists and prepared to fight them. But a third horror suddenly appeared. I'll handle this, he boomed. He waved Benson and Clem away. You can go. I've got this kid. This new horror was tall and athletic looking. He had short yellow horns on top of wavy green hair. His fat nose and tiny chin made him look a lot like a pug dog. He waited for the other two to leave. Then he turned to me. I saw that he had taken off his name tag. Michael, he said, you want out of horror land, don't you? I didn't answer his question. Instead, I took a few steps back. Who are you? I demanded. Why did you take off your name tag? 
What are you planning to do to me? I'm going to help you, he said softly. He pulled a small square mirror from his pocket. You want to go, Michael, so I'm going to help you go. Huh? I squinted at him. Then I gazed into the mirror. I suddenly felt strange, off balance. I felt a strong pull from the mirror, as if I were being drawn to it by a powerful magnet. Go ahead, the horror urged. Don't fight it, Michael. You want to leave, remember? I'm helping you leave. Go with it. Go with it. His voice faded as I was pulled, pulled toward the glass, pulled to my reflection in the little mirror. So strange. I could feel the smoothness of the glass, the cool liquid feel of it, deeper into the glass, deeper, and then through it, through the mirror. A rush of cold air blew over me. It made me shut my eyes. I felt myself falling. I struggled to catch my balance. When I opened my eyes, the horror, the trees, the grass, all had disappeared. Hey, where am I? I cried out loud. I gazed around. I was standing in a huge amusement park, but I didn't recognize anything. I squinted, waiting for my eyes to focus. I saw roller coasters high in the sky, and a Ferris wheel with cars sh shaped like sharks and alligators. And then my eyes stopped at a red and white sign. It had big, blood-red letters across it. PP. PP? Panic Park? Was this really Panic Park? Hey, I'm in Panic Park! I found it! I found Panic Park! I shouted. Then I felt a wave of fear slide over me. I glanced around, my heart pounding. But where is Panic Park? I wondered. And how do I get back to my friends? To be continued. And of course, book eight. Check this out. Before Horrorland, another monster starred in Goosebumps. Be careful what you wish for. Anyone's interested in that? Fear file number seven. So it's got like a manila folder open and on the left side there's a little paper paper clipped on that says, Welcome to the Mirror Mansion. Reflect on where it can take you. And then it's got another one below it. It says, Ride the Wheel of Fire. It's smoking hot. On the right side it says, Monsters Wanted. Horrorland is looking for a few good monsters to operate our rides and attractions. If you are a monster, please fill out this form and send it to Les Chompin Monsters Relation. Name, height, length of horns, length of tail, all of these creatures. Which, which of these creatures do you look like? Circle one. A giant insect, an octopus, a Komodo dragon, or all of the above. On a scale of one to five, how ugly are you? One being a little ugly and five being too ugly to work anywhere else. Find the rest at www.escapehorrorland.com. Signed, Lizzie. So here's this one. So that's about the Mirror Mansion and that's about the Wheel of Fire. And then here's like an application for Horrorland to work there, I guess. And then it's got a map number seven. I see a building that says horrors only, so maybe that was the one that they broke into. Tickets, 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 little booths, and then a big monster face with uh, bars like that. Um, and then a bus that says Horrorland. So here's map seven, and map nine connects up here. Map 5 connects on this side here. This book is your ticket to www.enterhorrorland.com. Checklist number 7. You're trapped in the bat barn. Ouch! Those bats have sharp claws. Can you stop this batastrophe? Uh-oh, here come the monster police. Don't fall into their trap. Search for the hidden stairway into the Horrorland underground. Explore the tunnels beneath Horrorland. Find the right door to escape the gorillas, but be careful not to enter Panic Park. Danger 8. D excuse me. Danger. An 8-foot horror awaits you. Can you defeat him before it's too late? All done with book seven.